Okay, so this is just a quick brief overview of some of the recorder reports that we re we've received for the ecology and entomology section um, for 2022. So I'm going to start off with my own. Um, I cover earthworms. Uh, we've had 439 new earthworm records uh, within the LNHS recording area this year, and a whopping 23 species recorded. Now, the coleopterists and uh, dipterists among you might think that's quite pitiful, but we only have 29 species in Great Britain, so that's quite impressive. Um, our focus this year really has been our Kingston earthworm survey. So we've surveyed a number of uh, nature reserves across Kingston in partnership with Kingston Council and the Field Studies Council, uh, the BioLinks project, and that's included surveying Rosewood Walk Nature Reserve, Elmbridge Meadows Nature Reserve, Tolworth Cot Farm, Moated Manor Reserve and Tolworth Cot Farm Fields Reserve. Uh, so obviously with 23 species recorded, that has included some rare species like the one pictured there, which is Aparetidia icterica. That's the first time I've ever managed to get a live photo of that earthworm. Um, moving on, um, our spider recorder, Edward Milner, uh, he, he'll send a full report for the London Naturalist, but just a few highlights. 132 species of spider have been recorded in London and Middlesex during 2022. Uh, he's continued with his pitfall trapping at Mile End Park and Tower Hamlets Cemetery Park and commenced pitfall trapping at a new site, Stanmore Marsh. Um, the large jumping spider, Marpissa muscosa, has been recorded on a spider forest with the friends of Colfall Woods, as was Nuktiana umbra umbratica. I'm not that familiar with these scientific names, so I'm going to be a bit stumbly through them, so I apologise if I pronounce anything wrong. Um, Anifina numida and Epicenus maculipes have been recorded at Myland Park and appear to be spreading quite rapidly in London. Uh, in Middlesex, we've got a new vice county record for... Cryptohea blatea, uh, which was found by David Carr. Uh, David also noted at the same site, uh, the University College School at Frognall, uh, an exotic jumping spider species, uh, Avacha jucunda, uh, but it's just a single record and it's not thought that it is established or it's not known that it's established as of yet. Uh, Linda Pike has sent in this wonderful slide, tell us what's new with Diptera in um 2022 so there's a new oh, linda this my my uh pronunciation this is probably going to be wrong it's ferris study group uh lesser dumb flies uh so uh they've noted yeah linda you're there aren't you yeah i'm here <laughs> yeah i might ask you just to explain uh about about the notes there because yeah yeah you'll be able um, to explain it better than me can you hear me all right yeah um yeah the lesser dung flies new study group there's only 141 species and there's a group they're identifiable um the good bit is they've got distinctive hind tarsi so you'll be able to find them the bad news is um they're small <laughs> and <laughs> dissection of course is the thing that has to be done to um, get into species in a lot of lot of the um specimens Oh, um, we also have Spring Workshop Dipterist Forum next year is British Fungus Gnats, which is taking advantage of the new book that was brought out earlier on this year. And the chap who wrote the book is running the, the sessions, so it'll be a good opportunity if anybody's interested to um, get to grips with those. Um, and as ever, number one most recorded, hover, most recorded fly in uh, the London area was marmalade hoverfly, um, Episurphus belteatus, and followed by dark edge bee fly, um, Batman hoverfly, Myathropa floria, Aristalis tenax, and Hilophilus pendulus, the hoverfly is number five. So we need more people out recording flies uh, and recording other flies to knock the marmalade hoverfly off its top spot for twenty twenty three. Well, uh, on the uh, LNHS records, um, on iRecord, uh, Episurphus baltiatus is the number four most recorded animal again this year. So we've got to get it up there and beat those foxes and squirrels into submission. <laughs> <this year. laughs> 
Brilliant. Thanks, Lynn. Oh. Um, next up is the report from Tom Langton. Uh, he's set in that this show is very dry and obviously that's not great for amphibian recording. Uh, he wanted to draw attention to a London naturalist who was an active nature conservationist for over 50 years and sadly passed away this spring. Uh, John Burton was born in South London and had an early interest in amphibians and reptiles as a child. And he was a great inspiration to others to get involved in recording and conservation. His interest grew when he started work in the Natural History Museum at the Natural History Museum, and he helped to produce one of the most successful field guides to European uh, herpetofauna. His work from 1975 went on to support amphibian and reptile bats and wildlife trade control projects in London, amongst many others via the Fauna and Flora Preservation Society in the 1980s. He also wrote two books stressing how urban wildlife appreciation is so important. At a memorial event at the Linnaean Society this September, Sir David Attenborough summed, summed it up with the remarks, John Burton, in my view, was a truly wonderful man, more altruistic, more energetic, braver and more original than almost anyone I have known. Uh, and Tom has noted quite rightly so, that's quite an accolade. Uh, a wildlife fund in his name, the John Burton Memorial Fund, has been established by the World Land Trust, the organisation that John built up since 1990, that is now a well-established and respected international conservation body. And a full obituary for uh, this wonderful naturalist will appear in this year's London Naturalist, uh, which is the uh, publication sent out to LNHS members each year. Um, so, uh, yeah, so there's just a few photos of John uh, and some of the work that he did um, over the years that he was active. Uh, moving on to butterflies from Leslie Williams, we've just got a few little updates. Uh, counts for some species of butterfly appeared low during mid to late summer this year, possibly due to patch vegetation and, and the drought that we experienced. However, more analysis will be to follow. Um, for 2021, a uh, report due in the, so the 2021 report for butterflies is due in the London Naturalist that will be uh, going out uh, in the near future. Uh, partial, well, in the future, partial recovery in monitored transect sites following pandemic lockdown restrictions. So that that's what the focus will be. Uh, also, just a note that we've got the London Butterfly Atlas project that Leslie is working very hard on and that that is progressing. So keep an eye out for more updates on that soon. Uh, dragonflies. So Neil Anderson has let us know that it was a good year for the Lesser Emperor with probably a mix of fresh immigration home breeding, exceptional count of 11 in Lee navigation, a pair seen at Rain and Marshes and Singletons at several sites. We had a pair of scarce chaser reported from Wartham Store Wetlands. Uh, the Norfolk Hawker was reported from new sites in Bexley, Wimbledon Common and Waltham Store Wetlands, as well as hotspots in north of Lee Valley and again seen at London Wetland Centre. And we had a single scarce blue-tailed damselfly found on one day by a recorder at a private site in Hillingdon in a habitat typical for that species. But it's probably the first London area record. So if anybody has any other records of this species, please do uh, send it in to Neil. Um, Tony, I know you're on the call. Uh, so uh, rather than me mix up my uh, scientific names for bees and wasps, do you want to jump in and, and do your update? I'm sure you wouldn't do that, Kieran. <laughs> Yeah, fine. Um, so just some highlights, really, because it's taken me a while to uh, process the huge number of records we have for the region anyway. But the highlight of this year has been the discovery of a single species of male Lestica clypeata, um, which is the it's this rather strange looking male that, that we found. Um, really exciting. This is myself and Mick Massey in the grounds of Chiswick House. It's the first accepted UK record in the UK since 1853. Unfortunately, we suspect it was 
probably an import, but it's definitely worth everybody looking out for these wasps just in case they're around. Um, and they, they look very similar, the females look very similar to the ectemnius wasps, but you have this very distinctive sponge-like abdominal tergite patterning. So it's definitely worth having a close look at any wasps you see. The other thing that's quite exciting is we've seen sort of rapid expansion over the last couple of years of the of Isodontia mexicana, which is a thread wasp. Really interesting, fun to watch because you often see them like um, little witches on, on um, broomsticks as they carry off bits of grass to make their nests. Very distinctive, about two centimeters in, in length. So do, you know, if you do find any in your areas, do, do uh, enter them as a recording. Um, they, they are super wasps. We also noticed the rise in Philanthus triangulum, the bee wolf, um, increasing numbers of records across the London area. And I was speaking to Mark actually last night, and he's even has uh, a nest colony of a couple of individuals on top of the Nomura building, um, which are basically predating on the hives on the, on the roofs. So if anybody's looking at roofing at the moment and city areas, do, do look out for bees and wasps because they are colonizing these high spaces in this different region um, um, across the capital. Unfortunately, we've also noticed the decline of Andrina hatafiana, which is the large scabious mining bee. Uh, we saw none of them in the area this year. So despite a number of us, and we have the new LNHS bee survey group, we were out looking for these bees and we couldn't find any. Um, and there are no records either uh, in the area for this year. We suspect this is because the, there was a lack of synchrony. We had early flowering scabious, which is the only, it's an oligolectic uh, bee. It's the only flower they'll visit. There were no scabious out uh, by the time they don't it had gone over by the time they, the bee should have emerged. So we're we'll wait and see what happens next year for those. Um, we had a lot of reports of Andrina floria the briny mining bee, which is quite a rare bee, but we seem to seeing saw a lot more of them this year. And again, whether it's because we're out looking for them or whether it's actually a, a bit of an expansion, we don't yet know. But nationally, records have declined, so it's good to see that we found more in our area. And the only other comment is, unfortunately, there's a lot of the eye record verification is a bit slow for um, for bees and wasps. Uh, apart from the rarer species. So, but nonetheless, it'd be great if people can continue to submit records. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that bees are woefully under-recorded in our area. Yes, they're quite tough, but submit those images, submit those photographs to I record, and we will have a look at them. But promising in some respects, some new species and expansions, others seem to be disappearing, and we'll put in a report for the London Naturalist later. All right, thanks, Tony. And on that note, I just want to say a huge thank you from myself personally and from the LNHS to all of the recorders. Uh, so th that's the recorders that volunteer their time to, to manage our recording of these groups in the London area and all of those uh, recorders that send in their records as well.